Please welcome Chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, Josh DeMauro, in discussion with Skip Senior Research Analyst, Seth Borka. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? These are actually pretty good. Yeah, they're better than they, better than they could seem. Huh? Yeah, it's comfortable for me. Well, thanks so much for, for joining us, Josh. We have Disney here at Skift. It's, it's really exciting for all of us. We love thanks it. for having me. Oh, yeah. So you run Parks Experience Products. That's a pretty big division. I don't know if people here really know just how big a job you really have. Maybe tell us about what are you, what are you, what are you in charge of here? Well, first of all, it's very cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's Parks Experiences and, and Products. Um, it's a big organization. We've got about 170,000 uh, cast members in the organization. Um, and we see, we, I oversee um, you know, resorts around the world. So we have six resort destinations around the world. We have 12 theme parks. Uh, we've got now five cruise ships, um, a couple more on their way. Uh, we're the biggest licensor um, in, the, in the world from a products perspective, the biggest children's publishing, uh, publisher uh, in the world, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's a lot going on inside of the business. Yeah. And so, you know, Skiff, we need to ask the hard-hitting questions, what everyone in the room wants to know. How, how, do, you get, how do you get that job? How do, how do I work? How do job. I run a Disney uh, park? Well, send me your resume right <laughs> yeah, afterwards, right. and we'll take a look at that. Um, I've been with the company for uh, just less than 25 years. I'm on my 25th year and right I, now. I think we have a picture, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and so uh, 25 years, and I started at the, the Disneyland Resort. Um, and the moment that I came into the Disneyland Resort, I can remember distinctly sitting in a room uh, with a bunch of leaders talking about trash cans on Main Street uh, and talking about a parade on Main Street. And I couldn't believe the amount of uh, attention and care that went into every single detail in terms of making that guest experience uh, so special. So uh, that first week, I knew I was, go I knew I was gonna be there. Uh, and so I was interested in everything and everyone around me, and I had a chance um, with the company to move around the world, to be in different divisions. I've lived in Hong Kong. I ran marketing for Hong Kong Disneyland. I got a chance to run Adventures by Disney, which is our, our family tour and travel business. I got to be the president of Disneyland. I got to run Disney Animal Kingdom. I got to be the president of Walt Disney World. Um, I've done a lot of cool stuff, and now I have I have uh, this job uh, yeah. as the chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, and um, I'll tell you what, we were talking backstage yeah. a moment ago. Are there some hard days like everybody in the industry? Of course, but do I love it? I, I love every minute of it. Nice picture, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, get good. that one down as quickly as you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, let's take it down, let's take it down. Well, so you have a lot of insight into the Disney business, the theme parks. I mean, I think it's not a secret to anyone who's paying attention that it's been a huge, you know, cash flow profit center for Disney recently. Are, are theme parks recession proof? Are you seeing, still seeing a lot of demand? I don't think there's anybody in this room that would suggest that their businesses are completely uh, recession proof. We have been doing exceptionally well, as you reported. Yeah. Anybody looking at our, uh, following our earnings calls can see that. And um, we, we continue to see really strong demand in the theme parks. One of the things you know, coming out of the pandemic is we did restructure how we think about our yeah. business from a commercial perspective, from a guest experience perspective, uh, et cetera. And I think that has given us a lot more um, levers, so to speak, or a dashboard that, that uh, can, can help us be much more flexible in an environment where uh, the economy maybe isn't cooperating mm -hmm. as it had before. Uh, so we feel very comfortable with, with where we are right now from a demand perspective, and we feel good about our ability to navigate much more effectively than we have in the past. And are, are you seeing any slowdown of pent-up demand, or people are still really want to get to Disneyland? You know? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're, we're fortunate, uh, and I know a lot of us in the industry are fortunate in that demand has been very, very strong for this year, and as we reported in our last yeah. Q3 earnings report, it can continues to, to be strong. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff happening around the, the theme parks and a new cruise line, a lot of celebrations taking yeah. place. We continue to invest very aggressively in the business and did through the pandemic. Uh, so uh, certainly people wanted to get out of their homes and come visit, but there's a lot in the pipeline from an experience perspective that are keeping people coming. So we're feeling very good from a demand standpoint. And I, I, I was one of the things I was thinking about prepping for this, like where, where this is a travel conference. Do you consider yourself a travel CEO or a travel CEO? like chairman, is, is Disney in the travel business or is it something, its own thing? Well, I think you can't really separate, you know, who we are from the travel industry. And I think that, uh, you know, we have incredibly strong relationships with um, hoteliers around the world, with, with airlines, 
um, travel companies, et cetera. Uh, we are in the, biz in the business of providing experiences and, and memories, um, and I think that's something that we've been exceptionally good at for the last 100 years of the company's existence, and we'll continue that uh, into, the, into the future. Awesome, and actually, 100 years, that's a good segue, so it's gonna be, Disney is gonna turn 100 years in 2023. That's right. Correct? So, you know, what's the secret to that kind of like long, very few companies can turn 100 years old. How, how do you guys do it? Yeah, it will turn 100 years old and still be incredibly successful and, and thriving. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple um, in that we have never compromised on creativity and storytelling in everything that we do. We are focused on making sure there's a story, whether that is walking down Main Street and understanding the history of the Disneyland Resort or creating an all new land like Avengers Campus mm -hmm. that we, we just opened in Paris and we have it in Disney California Adventure as well. Uh, there's an incredible amount of detail that goes into all of these and an incredible amount of rich story that goes in and we, that's never, never stopped in, in 100 years. Uh, we've got 100 more plus years to, to come, and I think if you go all the way back to Walt's time at, yeah. at Disneyland, he was, he was in telling stories at that time and inventing at that time um, and taking a lot of risks. We continue to, to do that. Uh, you've seen it with some of the products that, that um, I, yeah. I know you and I have even, even talked about, yeah. like the Galactic Star Cruiser, just inventing uh, new things, always focused on story, and we will continue to, to, to do that. We're going to come back to that Star okay. Cruiser. We actually have a poll, so I guess we, we asked, you know, what do you think attracts guests to the Disney experience, love of characters and stories? So I guess there's some free market research for you, I think. I think <laughs> it sounds like you've... I'll, I'll take it. I, I guess one of my interesting things, how do you keep it fresh, right? Like you've got this weird mix because you've got people who are so in love with the traditional stuff, but you want to keep innovating and pushing the stories. Like, how do you, how do you balance that? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting dilemma. Um, it's actually a dilemma that I, quite frankly, love. Um, uh, as I said, I started at Disneyland, and so I oftentimes got a chance to get out of my office and, and be in the park. And we have some passionate uh, Disney fans out there. Uh, and so... Uh, I, I love that. They know where everything is. They know where every tree on yeah. you know, Main Street or Adventureland, uh, where it is and why it's there and how it's somehow associated with Walt. Uh, they, they know every piece of that theme park and all of our theme parks uh, for that matter. And so when you touch something, when you move something, when you change something, you know, <laughs> there are going to be people watching and maybe second guessing uh, what you do. That's a good issue to have, I think. I think all of us would like businesses that people are paying very close attention to. It's then my responsibility, my team's responsibility to make sure that we're, we're listening and holding on uh, to that heritage, to that legacy, but also pushing forward to, to the, the future. Um, I'll stick with Disneyland for a second. One of my favorite things at the Disneyland Resort um, is something called the candlelight ceremony, and it's something that Walt started yeah. um, when Disneyland opened in, in 1955, and that ceremony is the same ceremony he started uh, back in 55 to today, so holding on to that tradition and, and, and legacy. Uh, at the same time, um, we're opening up brand new lands that are about one of the most contemporary brands in the world, Marvel, uh, and, and wowing people with completely new attractions. So there is a balance to be had for, for sure, um, and I think we do a good job of it, but you can't forget you know, where things started and what we're all about and making sure that you're, you're paying attention and listening to those guests, but still taking risks and pushing forward. And I mean, speaking about Walt, uh, we've got this, uh, this cool graphic we'll throw up. I think it's Walt's, one of Walt's original business plans that he sketched out. Yep. Yeah, like this I think was from, this was probably from the 40s, uh, maybe the early 50s. Walt was way, way ahead of his time. And so essentially what's happening here is back to that, that statement, Seth, that I made on creativity. Yeah. If you put creativity uh, at the center of this film, this is what Walt was calling that at the time, um, and, and if you can extend those stories out into an, an ecosystem, which is now the Walt Disney Company as we know it, it's a very, very powerful flywheel, so to speak. A great movie comes out, there's going to be a great book that follows that. There will be a land uh, in one of the theme parks and there will be a character. You're going to find it on, on television, uh, etc. And so he essentially created this way back then um, and fulfilled it and more. I also think this is a good picture potentially of what the future uh, could look like, and maybe we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. I mean, is there anything that Disney can't do with this? If you put 
the, the story, since there's any story they can't tell, or? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we can absolutely do anything we want uh, with the system. And like I said, it continues to, to expand and those connections become stronger. Uh, well, let me ask you this. There's been, I think maybe in corporate America, a, a trend towards being like more focused. You divest non-core businesses in the hotel space asset light. When I look at this chart, this is not asset light. This is not. Like, you guys are doing something different. Are, are, does everyone else have it wrong, or, or how are you guys able to make such a big... Well, listen, what's very important for us, and I, I referred to this a little bit earlier, is the details. We want to make sure that up and down, we are controlling that experience for the guests and make sure that we're delivering every single step of the way. Uh, and the more, the, the, the more vertical we are, the more control that we have. Now, we don't do everything ourselves. I talked about being the number one licensor in, yeah. in the world, um, and there we're, we're selecting the best partners that we possibly can in the industry, making sure that the product that's hitting shelves is, is quality product. But whether you're a partner of ours or we're doing it directly, we're going to make sure that every step of the way, every single detail is paid attention to. And so talking about leadership, uh, details, it's, it's down to your, your leadership. Yeah. I know you spend a lot of time in the parks. Like, why is that so important to you? Well, I, first of all, I love it. <laughs> okay, so I, I grew Fair. up in this industry. I grew up in, in this company. I know it well, and I'm very comfortable uh, being in that environment. So uh, if I'm not in a meeting, if I'm not reviewing an annual operating plan or thinking about a strategic plan, you will find me in the park. Uh, and I will walk every corner of that park or the cruise ship, if I can get on the cruise ship or a store, if I'm going to be into a store. And I will talk to anyone uh, who comes who crosses my path, whether it's a cast member uh, who's out on Main Street selling b balloons or in a, in a dish room, or a guest who may have a question or might have a concern, may have, may have some thoughts for me. Um, I will not shy away from any of that. And I think, you know, from, from an industry perspective, as leaders, it's incredibly important that we all do that. Uh, show up. Make sure that you are there. You're not someone who sits in an office and pushes a couple buttons, but you, you have to be in these businesses. If you want to be delivering great experiences, you better be feeling it for yourself. And if, it, if you're not feeling it, you better be out there uh, making changes. I think the other important thing is, I love doing it. I think it's incredibly important for the business. When you do it as a senior leader, you know what happens next. Yeah. Everybody follows. And so if you look at the president of Disneyland, you look at the president of Walt Disney World, uh, the, the president of our cruise lines, plus, 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 uh, they're essentially going to do the same thing. Well, if Josh is out in, yeah. in the theme parks, it must be important that I'm out in, in my specific business and it carries on. And what happens then? You've got 170,000 cast members who see their leaders, uh, trust their leaders, know who they are and what they represent, and they're going to show up at work differently. And it's not, this is not a small thing. That is, that's how life works. Uh, and I think particularly in the industry that all of us are in, yeah. it is incredibly important from a leadership standpoint. You know, sometimes it can be hard for, for you to brag on stage. So I'll brag for it, Josh. When I talked to some of your employees, they all said, oh, it's so cool. I always see them in the parks, and uh, it's great. So I think it's a powerful lesson. Well, I, I will talk to, to all of them. And I know, yeah. I know a lot of them. And I think that's a good measure for everybody. If you can get out there and feel comfortable and talk to somebody and reconnect with somebody, know who their family is and, and kind of what their hopes and dreams are, it's powerful. So there's, there's this huge labor crisis in travel and hospitality right now. Yeah. Are you having the same issue? Uh, we're actually faring quite well. Um, I will tell you, like everyone in this room, those couple of years during COVID were absolutely miserable. Um, one of, the, if not the most important thing to me, is, is our cast members and um, making sure that they're protected and, and, and feeling good. So having to go through what we all went through was an incredibly big challenge. Um, similar to the way that we talked about walking the parks, um, I and my team, we were making sure that we were connected with those cast members as we went through that rough period of, of time. It was kind of a reaffirmation for me of how important this place is um, um, to our cast, to our guests, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, we put our arms around them the best that we possibly could. When the theme parks opened back up, they came back. So again, 170,000 cast members essentially coming back. Now, do, do, were there some areas that were challenging, uh, like the industry's feeling? Y yeah, but essentially we came back quickly, which allowed us then to get those theme parks uh, reopened and throttling again. Uh, just to underline that, that's fascinating to me, because I don't think a lot of people in this, this room could say that when they reopened, their staff members came back. And the fact that yours did, I think, speaks to something. Well, it's, you know, working for Disney, and I can attest to this, it's, it's more than a job. Uh, you, you feel attached uh, to, to something. Uh, our cast members, uh, you, you know, uh, they, 
Uh, they could get a free education if they want. They're coming into our, our theme parks. They're making these connections with, with other cast members. They're part of the story. You know, talking to somebody on, on Main Street and driving these memories, it's a meaningful thing. So um, again, right when we reopened, they came back. So we're very fortunate in that regard. And I don't take that for granted. Yeah. Back to your point about how we lead, making sure we're connecting with them all the time. So your cast members are, are so important. You're, you're trying to support them. If they have you know, political beliefs that might be different from where they, the states that they work in, how do you deal with that kind of conflict? Well, I think, listen, the, the, the world is dealing with uh, a, a division uh, everywhere. Uh, what I do in this regard is I make sure that I am listening to absolutely everyone. Everyone has a voice at my table. I'm making sure that when our cast members come to work, they're able to, to express themselves that they want in the ways that they want to express themselves. You may have seen some changes that we've made uh, across the, the Walt Disney Company in terms of costume and, and dress codes, et cetera. Yes. I want people to feel uh, comfortable. I'm going to give you a, a good example, Seth, and then you're going to have to move me on. But um, uh, tattoos were something for a long uh, yeah. period of time that we didn't allow at the, at the Disney company. If you look at the statistics with who has tattoos, I won't t drag you through all the gory detail here. <laughs> it's a lot of, of the younger generation have, uh, have tattoos. And by the way, some of the best people in the service industry have tattoos. So we thought, let, let's invite them in and let's not have them hide things that are important to them. Quick story on that in terms of walking around the park. Uh, I can remember a security officer at Walt Disney World who I had known just by walking around and saying hello and understanding who he, who he was. Uh, the moment that we made that change, uh, he came running up to my car. Um, I put the window down and he said, Josh, you remember our conversation? I said, yeah, I absolutely remember the conversation. Uh, and he showed me his, his arm and he then talked about the tattoo that he had on his arm and how uh, it was important to him and it represented the different people in his family. And he was beaming. So what does that mean? That it's, it's a small step, but a step that essentially says, I can show up and talk about who I am. And if I, if I can show up and talk about who I am, that makes me a lot more comfortable um, yeah, in no. front of a, of a guest, and what does that mean to the guest? Then the guest better has a better experience. experience. And so while our guests love Space Mountain, uh, they love our parades and our fireworks, um, what they really love is those interactions with our cast members. So, so uh, for me, making sure that people feel included, making sure their voices are heard, is incredibly important. And I think as leaders in this industry, that's what you have to do. It doesn't mean it's always comfortable, yeah. uh, because oftentimes our, our employees are they're representative of the world. Yeah. Um, everybody doesn't always have to agree. You just have to listen and make sure people can show up um, as, as who they really are. Love that message. Let's talk a bit about some travel experiences. We, you mentioned earlier, I'm, like, I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'm obsessed with this galactic star cruiser. <laughs> what is it? It's like a, a cruise ship in a hotel, a, 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 an experience. Like, what is Is it a hotel? No? It's, yeah. Uh, no, it's a, you, you're getting on a spaceship and traveling. Oh, to, to of course, of course, naturally. Well, listen, here's, here's the way I'll start on this. Um, you know, we have been pressed, we continue to press to do things very different differently than we have in the, in the past. And so the idea here was, how do we create an immersive experience uh, that is uh, surrounded by st Star Wars, based yeah. on, on Star Wars, take guests into space for a two-day cruise, um, and yeah. feel like it, be, be totally in it. So think about theater over the course of two days, um, and you're staying on this galactic star cruiser. Yeah. Uh, when we launched this, I will say there were a fair amount of skeptics. <laughs> well, what, what is it that you're doing? That doesn't make any sense. Why would somebody want to do that? Well, the answer is it is an incredible, incredibly differentiated, difficult to explain yeah. uh, experience. It's a hundred room ship. Yeah. Um, and uh, as you probably know, it's been selling out uh, pretty, mm -hmm. pretty consistently here. Uh, but this is what, you know, listen, Walt did this back in 1955. He invented something that didn't exist before and he changed the course of the industry. We're continuing to in invent. Galactic Star Cruiser is an example of that. New attractions coming out, new shows coming out all the time. Um, and so you're going to have to face some questions yeah. when you push into that space, which we did. Uh, and then I think once the media and our guests got aboard, you kind of see what happens. Yeah. Is, I mean, I, I will say one thing. It, it's quite an expensive trip. Is your, it feels like your competition for this is the Amman Hotel in New York, not, <laughs> not the like, I, I, I think our competition for this is those that want to be fully immersed uh, into Star Wars and theater and feel transformed when, yeah. when you come out. 
Um, so this, um, I, I think, again, the demand speaks for itself in terms of, of th this experience. Uh, th there's a, a quick story on this yeah. one. I got a chance to test it out with my son before the general public got a chance to come on. And, and he didn't quite know exactly what it was, and I did my best to describe. I said, we're basically going to go on a ship. Uh, he's 20 years old, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we're basically going to go on a ship. We're going to go up into space uh, for, for two days. Um, and uh, we're going to have missions, and we're, 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 it's going to be fun. Come along with me, Alex. And, and, and he did. Uh, on, the, on the second day, on the Star Cruiser, we're sitting in, uh, at breakfast, and he says to me, I'm going to destroy a little magic here, but he, he says to me, where do, where do the cast members stay? Where, where are their quarters? And I sat there looking at him like, you know, I'm not sure if the team took me through that. I'm not sure where they stay. Well, the answer is they don't stay. <laughs> But you get so absorbed into this world, you, you think you're actually flying in, yeah. in You forget space. you're not in space. Uh, so it's, it's, it is a, a transformational, incredible experience that no one is, is doing today. Well, we talk a lot about experiential traveler, and, and that feels like an, a real experience for me. You have this, this concept, uh, we were talking about it a little bit, you call it next generation storytelling. Mm -hmm. Someone else, a different CEO, might call it the metaverse. It, it, what's, what's the future of physical and digital experiences in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I, for the Disney company, I would definitely call it next generation storytelling. Um, you, had a, you had a page up a moment ago that showed Walt's yeah. you, you know, kind of scribble of what he envisioned the company to be. I think that was probably the earliest iteration of what next generation storytelling could be. You can call it metaverse or, or whatever you want, but uh, figuring out a way to connect the physical and the virtual, figuring out a way to move um, a, a guest through experiences seamlessly. Um, he was way ahead of his time. The tools that we now have available to us today, um, with the chart that you saw up there in a moment, they are just explosive. If we stick with what I said at the front here, we are all about storytelling. Yeah. That's why we've been successful, and we've never deviated from that in 100 years, nor will we ever uh, deviate. You think about the palette that we now have, combining technology with the assets that you, yeah. you re referred to, uh, a little bit earlier. It's unbelievable in terms of what our, our, our creatives, our artists are going to be, be able to do. Um, a book doesn't have to end on the last chapter. A painting can have a canvas that is infinite. Um, we are going to be able to do some amazing things here uh, to take what you all know as Disney today and build so much more dimension into it. You think about Haunted Mansion. Yeah. How many times do you think guests have thought as they're in their doom buggy, making their way around to the dance scene, I wonder what's on the other side of that? Well, we'll be able to tell stories on, on that front. Uh, so it's, the, the possibilities uh, are without bound here. I think we can go absolutely anywhere that we want. We're already doing it yeah. today, by the way, integrating the two uh, together. Is, is Mary going to need to buy a film studio to compete with you guys pretty soon? <laughs> or what do you think? I won't answer that. All one. right. <laughs> well, let's, let's throw to some, some audience questions. Yeah. I think we've got uh, a nice one here from Jill. You're looking towards the future. What, what, what have you, the future roadmap you've got are you most excited about? Well, I think, um, I think this idea of next generation yeah. storytelling and continuing to push the envelope is, is something I'm really excited about. We just had our, our D23 conference a few weeks ago in Anaheim where I talked about some of the new things that are, that are coming. I had the Hulk come out up on stage with me, uh, uh, standing 12 feet tall or whatever his, his height is. I think that we, just have, we have so much more coming that will continue this narrative of creativity and storytelling and bringing it into, into the next generation. And I think all of us in, in this space need to be thinking about how we can push ourselves to, to not just deliver what we delivered yesterday incrementally better, but deliver it in a completely new way. I think that's what guests are expecting of us. And these next 100 years, you, you will see that in spades. Love it. Uh, I think that's fascinating. I think it really hits on a lot of the key points of what makes a great experience. So thank you so much, Josh. Thank you, Wonderful. Seth. Thank you. <laughs> you, want you go first. <laughs>